last time we talked about the product rule and the quotient rule. There are three big important rules of this type, and the third one is called the chain rule. This is what you do when you have functions which are plugged inside of one another, not uh, multiplied together, but one function inside of another function. So the chain rule is a formula for this derivative of something like that. I don't really need this one here. Derivative of f of g of x. That is, you have one thing plugged inside of another thing. I, I don't know if this seems weird to you, but actually this is extremely useful. We're going to be using the chain rule all the time. A thing which depends on another thing. That's the idea behind this. Think about um, in the real world, you know, I try to give, give you some uh, examples. Why would you care about how fast something is changing when the thing you're thinking about is a thing which depends on another thing? It sounds a little complicated, but actually it's not. This comes up all the time in the real world. For instance, how about... Um, Let's imagine like you got a medicine. Let's say you have like an IV medicine that lowers somebody's blood pressure. The more this medicine in your body, the, your, your blood pressure goes down, right? And you, you hook somebody up to the IV. And um, I don't know if you know about IVs. I don't know much about it. But there, there is like a little thing you can do to adjust the speed of the drip on an IV. All right. So um, you really what you care about if you're hooking somebody up to this this uh, IV is you want to lower their blood pressure, right? Uh, but their blood pressure is a thing which depends on another thing, and that is how much of the medicine is going into them. And if you want to lower their blood pressure quickly, you need to adjust the speed of the IV thing quickly, right? Um, this is a situation in which you care about the rate of change of the blood pressure, um, but that is determined, or it is at least influenced, by the rate of change of the medicine dripping into the, into the thing here. So this is a situation in which you care about the rate of a thing which depends on another thing, and that other thing also has a rate. All right. Anyway, I, I'm just trying to convince you. This happens in, in investments all the time. There are all kinds of complicated investments where you can buy an investment in one thing, but that value actually depends on the value of something else. Um, it happens all the time. Uh, anyway, the way to handle this is called the chain rule. And um, you do this when you have a function on the outside and a function on the inside. Let me just tell you what the rule is, and then we're going to do a bunch of examples using the chain rule. The rule is this. I'll write it down first, and then we'll talk about it. Now, uh, remember, this is f with a g inside of it. This is not f uh, multiplication. What, what you see right here is not f times g of x. This is f, uh, g of x stuck inside of another function, f of x. And the answer is, what you do is you do f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Now, uh, actually, when I, when I remember the chain rule, I don't actually have this memorized like as a formula. The way that I think of this is um, the f I think of as the function on the outside and the g is the function on the inside, right? We have one function plugged inside of another function. f is the outside function, g is the inside function. And what we have over here, so I could write this sort of as a slogan, and this is when I, you know, I, I remember the chain rule, but uh, the way I remember it is according to this slogan, which I'm about to say. The second part here is the derivative of the inside, right? It's just the derivative of the inside function. The first one is a little more complicated, but we can still say what it is. Really, it's the derivative of the outside function, but you keep the same thing on the inside. You don't take the derivative of both of them. You just take the derivative on the outside and you leave the same thing on the inside. So this is derivative, derivative of the outside with the same inside, all right? This is a little tricky, actually. This is one thing that a lot of people mess up. Some people just like go crazy, try and take the derivative everywhere. You don't actually uh, take the derivative on the inside when you're doing the chain rule. You take the derivative on the outside and you leave the same thing on the inside. And then you multiply. This right here is really multiplication. They're right next to each other. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. All right, that's all there is to explain about the chain rule. Why the chain rule is true, I don't really want to get into. It's actually quite a bit more difficult to um, to uh, give a proof of the chain rule. The product rule and the quotient rule you can prove by fairly simple tricks like I did last time, but this one is uh, quite a bit more difficult. I think our time is better spent just uh, trying to do a bunch of examples. You'll see they're not so hard to do.
Okay, how about this one? This is the derivative of x squared plus 5x plus 1, all of this to the 100 power. Now, uh, and here's our chain rule. Um, if you're going to use the chain rule here, which you are, you have to uh, look at this and decide for yourself uh, that it is indeed one function which is plugged inside of another function. Now, when I write the chain rule in this way, you always see the outside function is the f and the inside function is the g. Um, and when it's written this way, the f always like comes first before the g, although that's not always the case. When you look at a function here, you will see, let's try to identify what is the inside and what is the outside. Well, I mean, you can tell by the parentheses here, right? The inside is that. This is the inside, right? And then the outside is really over here. In this case, the outside function was written down first. In this case, it comes at the end, but it's just because of the way we write uh, exponents. Anyway, the outside in this case is the 100th power, right? Okay, uh, so identify what part is the inside, what part is the outside. Usually it's easy to tell. Um, and then you just do this. So remember the slogan form of the chain rule says you take the derivative on the outside and leave the same thing on the inside. And then you multiply by the derivative on the inside. So what do we get? Here, take the derivative of the outside, leave the same thing on the inside. So that means I'm gonna look at this hundredth power and do the derivative to the hundredth power. How do you do the derivative of something to the hundredth power? You bring the exponent down in the front. This is the power rule, right? And then you put the same stuff and decrease the power by one to the 99, right? And what are we gonna put in here? Well, remember, the chain rule says you do the, out, the derivative of the outside with the same thing on the inside. So I'm going to write the same thing on the inside, x squared plus five x plus one, all right? Do not also take the derivative on the inside. You've gone too far if you do that, okay? And then, we're not done. That was just this part, the derivative of the outside with the same thing on the inside. And then times g prime of x. That's the derivative on the inside. Now, if you really want to take the derivative of the inside, now is your moment. The derivative of the inside. Put this in parentheses, haters. 2x plus 5. That's it. This is the derivative. All right. As always, I will say, don't try to simplify this unless you have a good reason to. I didn't tell you to simplify, so you have no good reason to. This is the answer. That's the derivative of this thing. This is a typical chain rule example. You have one thing inside of another thing. You do the derivative on the outside with the same stuff on the inside times the derivative of the inside. There you go. These really don't get much harder than that. Here's another uh, very similar example. How about derivative of 8x minus 5x to the 4 to the power 8. Let's do it. Again, I have this stuff is on the inside and the outside is the eighth power. So when I take the derivative, I do the derivative on the outside first. I bring the eight down and make this a seven. That's the derivative on the outside. With the same thing, writing the same thing on the inside, eight x minus five x to the four, right? That's the derivative of the outside, the same thing on the inside. And then times g prime of x, the derivative of the inside. That would be eight minus 20 x cubed. There you go, this is the chain rule. There's not much more to it than that. I just have two more examples. Let's see how we do. Did I say two more examples? I got three more examples. Don't worry about it. How about this? Uh, square root of five X squared minus 10. Derivative of that. What do you think? This is a square root. Um, I hope you remember our typical approach to square roots. In this class, it is always appropriate to rewrite a square root as a fractional exponent, a one half power. So this, I'm not doing the derivative yet. I'm just writing this again. It is five X squared minus 10 to the power one half, right? And now it looks just like all our other examples that we just did, right? It's a thing on the inside with an exponent on the outside. So we do the chain rule, bringing the exponent down to the front, same stuff on the inside. Then I decrease the exponent by one, it becomes minus one half. And then times, that, that was this part, right? F prime g of x, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 10x, just 10x, right? Okay, there you go. 
as written, this thing looks like a quotient, right? So you could actually use the quotient rule here, but uh, in fact, you can rewrite this so that it looks very similar to all the ones that we just did by using a negative exponent, right? This is uh, something, uh, you know, four over something to the third. We can rewrite that as this thing to the minus three. So if you like, I'm bringing this up and using a negative exponent now. It's four times x squared plus seven x to the negative three, right? So this is another rewriting trick. And now we can do this as we have done the previous ones with the chain rule. I do the derivative on the outside. The minus three comes down, multiplies by the four. I get minus 12 in the front. Same thing on the inside. And then the exponent decreases by one. It becomes minus four. And then chain rule says multiply times the derivative of the inside. That should be two X plus seven. There you go. Sometimes you want to rewrite it first and then do the chain rule. One more example and that's it. All right, how about this? This one looks the same as the others, but it actually has an important difference. In this one, I have this thing inside of a thing, which is just like all the other ones that we just did, but it's got X in the front. X times this thing inside of a thing. What do we have to do with that? Well. This thing inside of a thing requires the chain rule, but we also have a multiplication here, which is going to require the product rule. So we're gonna to have to do the product rule and the chain rule. And you should think of yourself, or think to yourself. I hope you think well of yourself. You should think to yourself, is this like a chain rule as part of a product rule or is it a product rule as part of a chain rule? And in fact, it's going to be a product rule overall, but one of the things in the product uh, will involve the chain rule, all right? We, we have this multiplication here. So I'm going to do the product rule. It's just that when it comes time to take the derivative of the second part, I'm gonna have to use the chain rule. Anyway, what we get is the first thing, I hope you remember the product rule. It's the first thing times the derivative of the second thing. So I write the first thing as is X, and now times the derivative of the second thing, the derivative of this part, I need to use the chain rule now. So I go four in the front, same thing on the inside decrease the four to a three, then multiply by the derivative of the inside, two X plus five. All right, all of, so this was the first thing. All of this was the derivative of the second thing. I'm doing the product rule. And then I go plus, remember the product rule is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I've done the first times the derivative of the second so far. Now I go plus the second thing like it is, X squared plus five X to the four times the derivative of the first, the derivative of X is, one. All right. There you go. This is the uh, the answer. As usual, don't try to simplify that unless you've got more time than I do. All right. I think that'll do it. That's a short one. Nothing wrong with that.